and your former teammate Herschel Walker. Were you surprised Herschel didn't have more success in the in the NFL? I think he had a lot of success. I mean, you can, I don't know how many guys you can say the one that has the trophy and cover kicks at the end of their career. He was on the punt team. He was on the you know, kickoff return team. And then he did some things, you know, to help Minnesota that year. I remember that first game he played when he went to, um, you know, Minnesota, and then he did a tremendous job. I remember the first game he played in Dallas. I remember, you know, him running over Harry Carson is, was, like, unbelievable. And, you know, he and Harry, and, I, and you never saw that happen. It only happened once, and he did it. <laughs> you know, so. What did Harry say after that? Because because uh, that's a, that's what sticks in my mind from that game when I think of that 1986 20. Uh, well, Harry said to that guy, he said to me, "How come you didn't tell me that he was like that?" I said, "I told you, you kept taking him for granted." I mean, I say when he wants to, he can bring it, and he brought it on that play with Harry. But he was the only one I ever saw do it. You know, Harry Carson like that. And let's just go back to the USFL for a second. 1984, you play down in Jacksonville, and over 70,000 fans show up. You know, the USFL was popular in a lot of cities. Do you remember that game? You guys won it 28-26 to 26 with over 70,000 fans at that game? Yeah, I remember that game particularly because I scored a touchdown in the game. And I remember, you know, I had signed with the Giants, I think, previously the week before. And I remember um, Chris Palmer at that time was our offensive coordinator, and I remember... You know, uh, Donald Trump telling him if I scored another touchdown, he was so fire, Chris. So, you know, um, that was that game really stuck out of my mind a lot. But you know, Chris and you know Coach Michaels, they you know kept giving me opportunities and kept trying to deliver. And 1986, of course, you guys are 14 and two. But the big statement game that year was that Monday night game, as I recall, against the uh, against the 49ers. That was the game when Bavaro dragged Ronnie Lott into the end zone. That was kind of the statement game for that team that year, would you say? I wouldn't say. I think it was the statement game for us, I think, from, from my recollection of that season, was up in Minnesota. We had a, it was a crucial play in the game. I think it was like fourth and 17, and Bobby Johnson made a, Phil made a heck of a throw, and Bobby ran a heck of a route, and we got a first down, and then we ended up, you know, kicking the field goal. That was a statement game for us because I think, you know, we were struggling offensively a little bit prior to that game, and I think once we made that play, it turned everything around for us. And I think that that play was the statement play for us more so than, you know, that San Francisco game, and you know, and I think there was that particular play in Minnesota, 4th and 17, that we came up and executed it and, and, and made a first down and went on to kick a field goal to win the game. Okay, and you guys finished 14-2 and two that year. The first round of the playoffs, you have the 49ers, and you guys really put a whipping on the 49ers. Do you remember that game? It was 49-3, to three, as I recall, something like that. That, that yeah, was the game Montana got knocked out by uh, by Jim Burt. Yes. I think that, you know, it was... It, it was it, it's 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 like you you coach and you tell guys about you don't know what play it is and at that time you know they were moving the ball pretty effectively against our defense which never happened and then I remember Jerry Rice catching a slant route and he was leading everybody the next guy was within ten yards and he fumbled and that particular play we recovered and, and the rest was you know history in that game when we turned it on we got the momentum and you know it was hard for us to stop him I think if Jerry Rice catches that ball and take it into the end zone that you know that might be a different story but uh, it didn't happen that way um I remember you know both times that we had to go through the 49ers to get to the Super Bowl so you know those are always good games and you know they they play you know great games against us, but we just, I think that one play, if Jerry Rice fumbling the ball in that situation, I think it turned it around for us. What was the the thought process in the locker room? Obviously, the year before, you beat the 49ers, too, at home, 17-3. to Was it a feeling in 86 you couldn't be beat, or was it more just a feeling that you were very confident in, in yourselves? I think it, it was, the, 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 feeling we, the feeling was for us is we knew what we were, um, offensively, we we knew we had a great defense, and we knew that offensively, Bill bought, Bill had us buy into. Hey, we're not going out there to turn the ball over and lose the game. We accepted that as offensive football players, and you know it's hard to stop you when you're able to do that. You're able to run the ball. Joe, Joe was running tremendously. The offensive line we had, well, you know, five of the most smartest guys I've ever been around as football players, and they didn't get hurt, and they stayed together. You know, the whole season. 
Jefferson, and we just jailed a click, and we did whatever we had to do. You know, we just pretty much knew once we got up three to nothing, it was you know basically over because our defense was going to take over. So when you got a tremendous defense like our defense was, then you can play that style of football, and that's what we did. And then also the championship game, like in Chicago the year before, it was so cold, and the championship game against the Redskins, I recall the winds were like 50 miles an hour, and you guys were able to shut out the Washington Redskins in that game. Yes, it was, and the thing I remember mostly about that game was the confetti the, the, the fans had through in the stand. I remember standing on the field and, and looking up and saying that, hey, you know, we was going to the Super Bowl, and that was a tremendous feeling. And then you go to the Super Bowl, and the Broncos are moving the ball against your defense there, and a cup, a missed field goal by Carlos, and and the Giants' defense was able to stop uh, Denver inside the ten yard line a couple of times. It was a little bit of a scare early on as you guys were trailing ten to nine at, at halftime. What do you remember? Bill Parcells said to you guys at halftime that you guys went out and and just lit things up for thirty points in the second half. I don't. I can't remember. I can't remember Bill what Bill's speech was then. You know, all I all I remember about the game is that, you know, we shifted and moved our tight end and they really never made any adjustments. So I think we ended up we were we were basing our shift upon, you know, Carl Mecklenburg and we moved around and did some things like that and was able to execute it and, you know, Earhart had a good game plan for us, and, and and we executed it pretty well, and you know won the game. The field played tremendously, and you knew you knew we practiced during the week before the uh, Super Bowl that we were going to play good because Phil had one of those practices and that whole week where he couldn't miss. He was on everything. I mean, he hit almost every receivers. Receivers caught the ball. You just knew he was going to play well because he practiced that way. And Phil Simms, of course, 22 or 25 in that game. So, as you say, you, you kind of sensed something special was going to happen with Phil in that game during the week of practice? Oh, yes, I did. You know, because he, the way he threw the ball, he was tremendous. He didn't miss anything that week in practice. And especially that Friday when you, you know, executing down in the red area, you're doing those things. He was, you know, he, you see him like he had the, it was like he was, he had the hot hand or something. And, you know, 